Conservative Party Chairman, the new one, uh, Mr. Greg Hans. Uh, very good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Now, tell me this. Uh, I assume, I haven't seen it in the headlines yet, I don't know why, uh, I assume you'll tell us now the Conservative Party is in good hands. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, yeah, the Conservative Party's in good shape, actually. Membership is uh, increasing. Our financial position is improving. Uh, the party is in a good position. We've obviously got um, important local elections this year uh, and we've got a general election to look forward to next year. So there's, there's plenty to do. OK, I'm assuming all the due diligence has been done on you. You're not going to have any dodgy tax returns. I'm fully up to date with uh, all of my taxes um, and uh, no problem there at all. And are you planning on perhaps on publishing them or any update on when the Prime Minister might be publishing his? Well, look, uh, I think that uh, is something uh, for the Prime Minister. I think he's already committed uh, to do that, uh, and I'm sure he will do in due course. Greg, got to ask you, um, you seem an upbeat character. You seemed very positive yesterday any time I saw you being interviewed or reporters throwing questions at you. Um, why, why, why is it that so many people didn't want this job? We hear people turning it down. We, we, we know, in fact, uh, Grant Shapps didn't want it again. Um, and it's a, it could be a bit of a poisoned chalice. Why did you take it on? Uh, well, look, I, I'm not aware of that. I don't think that is the case. Um, I think the time taken was to do uh, the wider reshuffle. You'll have seen that uh, Rishi has created uh, a new two couple of new government departments to bring a sharper focus to the government on things like energy security, on, on science and technology, and making sure his five priorities uh, are seen through. Uh, I'm really looking forward to doing this job. You know, it's a fantastic opportunity uh, to be chairman of the Conservative Party. I've been a member of the party for 37 years. I've served the party at uh, many different levels. I've been a local councillor. I've been a member of parliament for 18 years. I've been a government minister. Uh, for most of the time since 2011. So I think it's a fantastic opportunity. See, and uh, I presume, having a Greg, good I presume, Greg, you 18 think months you, or so for the general election. I, I presume you think you know your people, right? You know your party. It's interesting, though, that your deputy chairman seems to be a different type of politician that, than you um, and may know that party in, in a different way, Lee Anderson. Mm. Um, he might be more red wall where you are more... Blue wall together, does that make a good combo or is that divisive? No, I think Lee Anderson and I will work very well together. I think Lee is a fantastic uh, uh, asset for the Conservative Party. Uh, of course, we've got other deputy chairmen, we've got vice chairman as well, so it's not just uh, me and him. We've got a great team uh, at Conservative headquarters, we've got a really fantastic. A team of staff all dedicated uh, to making sure that uh, Rishi Sunak wins uh, next year's general election. I was going to say, Go that's a general election, but then the, the local government mm. elections right before then, uh, you mightn't be so confident in saying that you, you'll do well there. And if you don't do well there, um, how do you then uh, shape that? How do you then frame that in terms of, well, actually, you know, that's a bit of a wake-up call. It's a mid-government election, whatever. We've got the big one to come, the general election. I mean, you're probably going to have to take a bit of a punch to the belly, really, on this one, and then regroup after that, realistically? Uh, well, I think um, <clears throat> it's not a secret to say that this year's local elections will be a difficult set of local elections uh, for the party. Um, but the important thing is that we do uh, as well as we can and set the platform um, for um, a general election uh, next year. Uh, obviously, local elections this year will also be fought on uh, local issues. There's uh, an interesting set of uh, the country that's up for local elections. There's a few directly elected mayors as well. Um, so there'll definitely be an interesting contest this year. Um, but our main focus is going to be on making sure we've got everything in place uh, to win next year's general election, uh, to take on an unreformed Labour Party that lurks behind uh, Sir Keir Starmer. I think 160 Labour MPs out on picket lines last week. You know, it's this sort of thing that we need to bring to the British people, that the, the Labour Party behind uh, Sir Keir Starmer uh, is an unreformed 
a, a party that is still uh, very much characterised by uh, the people that Jeremy Corbyn put in place. I um, just want to ask you about a couple of the other um, stories doing the rounds this morning before we let you go. Our top story this morning about the sentencing uh, of the police officer, disgraced uh, police officer David Carrick. Um, many people <coughs> calling his sentencing unduly lenient. Now in the hands of the government, the Attorney General looking at it. Um, your views, your own personal views, party of law and order, do you think it's unduly lenient? Well, look, I think it's, uh, there'll be a proper process for that, and I don't want to prejudge uh, that process. But I think all of us are absolutely shocked uh, at what has happened, uh, that somebody who is uh, trusted uh, with public safety should so uh, flagrantly abuse uh, that position uh, and be such a danger to public safety of many women. So I think uh, that is uh, something which, of course, is going to be looked at. It wouldn't be right for me to prejudge okay. that process. Uh, but I share, I think, the shock of the country uh, as to uh, what that man was allowed to get away with. Uh, and your reaction to the, the blow for the government yesterday in the Lords when they defeated your attempts to try and clamp down on slow marching, a uh, big attempt by the government to try and clamp down on protesters, and that's been stopped in the Lords and it can't be <coughs> pursued again? Well, look, I think uh, it shows that the, the Labour Party isn't serious about um, protecting the public... Uh, going about their daily lives. You know, what we saw, particularly during last year, were a lot of uh, demonstrations where uh, people sort of recklessly um, trying to prevent the members of the public going about their daily lives. I think that uh, shows where the Labour Party is on this. And the Conservative Party, we are very much on the side of the law-abiding public wanting to get to work, get, to, uh, get about their daily lives. That's what it's all about. Um, and it shows, I think, where the Labour Party's priorities are, which are not in line with the British people. Well, there you are. That's Greg Hans. Yeah. He is the new Conservative Party chairman, and uh, they reckon they probably chose him because he comes out punching. Nice. There he is. He's led so, two right. or three punches great name on the, the Labour role. Party. Yeah, and he's got those hands working yeah. uh, quite shifty. Getting shift. his he's, hands dirty, rolling he's up the Muhammad sleeve. Ali of uh, the Conservatives, <laughs> uh, really, there, the big hitter. Uh, good luck on your job, Greg Hans. Thanks for your time this morning. And uh, we appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Got to leave it there. Thank